بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ٹو اینر ایپیسوڈ آف گیسٹ ان ٹاؤن لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹ مین ایز یو نو دیٹ گیسٹ ان ٹاؤن از ریگارڈنگ دوز اے کلیمڈ فارنرز اینڈ پاکستانیز ہو ڈو ناٹ لیو ان پاکستان بٹ دے آر ولنگ ٹو ڈو سم تھنگ اباؤٹ دس کنٹری وائر لیونگ اوے سملرلی وی ہیو دس انڈیویجل ہو ہیز نیور بین ٹو پاکستان بٹ ہر ہارٹ ٹولڈ ہر دیٹ شی ہیز ٹو بی ان دس کنٹری کیرولینا بنسٹر who is the founder of the Walkabout Foundation and she has a charity to run all around the world. But she says that she's a global citizen and today here with us in Pakistan Television News. Carolina, welcome to the PTV studios. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Carolina, firstly, I would like to know and many of my audiences watching you around the world would like to know about your background, where you, were you born and raised? I was born in a, in a town called Greenwich, Connecticut, in the state of Connecticut in, in the U.S. Um, my parents are from Argentina, but I was raised my whole life in the U.S. Okay. Uh, then, from there, you were studying in the United States, or were you in the United Kingdom? So, I, um, I did my undergraduate degree at Georgetown University. Mm-hmm. I double majored in government and art history. Mm-hmm. And as I finished my bachelor's degree, I went to London, to the London School of Economics, to do a master's in Latin American comparative politics. Okay. And since then, I've stayed in London. So I've been in London for uh, about seven years now. Seven years. Then, uh, in one of the events, you were pursuing one of the foundation called as Walkabout Foundation. Can I ask that what triggered you to open this organization? Yes, absolutely. I was actually working in banking, in finance, and um, I was working out of the London office when I actually got asked to move to the Dubai office. So I was working in the Dubai office, and in the middle of the whole financial crisis, I decided to take a, to take a moment, take a breath, and go back to the States to see my family. My oldest brother had a car accident that left him paralyzed from the chest down, and he was training for a marathon, the New York Marathon, and he was swimming in our outdoor pool at home every day, And I said to him, why are you swimming outdoors when you could be swimming in the indoor swimming pool facility, which is two minutes from our home? And he said, can you go check it out for me? And I went with my mother. And uh, we, were, we were quite surprised and quite shocked when we realized that after a $40 million dollar renovation, um, the YMCA was not wheelchair accessible. They had forgotten, and they, they had forgotten to build a ramp or an elevator. So this sparked, this ignited the campaign that my brother and I started To, to be able to help people who, like him, want to access every far place that the world has to offer. And so we started the Walkabout Foundation as a result. Okay. Many of the people, they think that they should start with some of the charity, but they are unable to go to the step two. What, you must have seen lots of problems in the beginning. Could you kindly name few which could be known to many of the others who wants to do something and they think that that will be an easy sale? No, I mean, by no means is it an easy sale, but in many ways, the way I describe it is that setting up a charity is very much like setting up a business. You're an entrepreneur, you're, you're a startup organization, so you're going to encounter the same obstacles and the same difficulties you would encounter when you're setting up a for-profit business, for example. So everything from registration to incorporation to a board of d- directors and a board of trustees to a logo, a name, branding, marketing, how do you get the word out there? How do you get your, your organization into the hearts of the people who will support your organization? Those are just some of the challenges that we faced at the beginning. To run a charity, you have to go to people, convince them to fund it. What do you tell them that they are convinced finally to let you have their money? I think what we tell them predominantly is that this wheelchair that we provide actually not only gives someone mobility, but it actually gives someone freedom and independence. And by saying that, you actually get to the heart of the individual that you, will, that you, are, that you are asking for a, a donation from. So um, we actually not only get to the heart of the individual, but we also show them the images, the videos of countries where we worked in the past and where donations have actually made a tangible real life difference. Okay. You had, uh, uh, this is your first visit to Pakistan? This is my first visit to Pakistan. Okay. One was the news about Pakistan. 
and now you have seen the real Pakistan you're here in Islamabad is it the same Pakistan which you have heard in the news no it's actually not the same Pakistan I've heard in the news um, I've heard a Pakistan that is a difficult pa Pakistan it's a challenging Pakistan it's a difficult place to visit it's a difficult place to work in because of things like security issues but I have to say that having been here for the first time and being here right now and having been here for now over two days it has beyond exceeded any of my expectations and everything that I thought about Pakistan actually it's the opposite Pakistan is a beautiful country with the most warm and loving and generous people people who are spirited who want to help who want to succeed who want to thrive and I have to say that I've had the most unbelievable experience and I'm fascinated by Pakistan and I guarantee this will not be my first and only visit Okay, Carolina, there, as you have mentioned, there are many of the experiences. Could you name anyone where something touched your heart and then you con were convinced that I was being stopped? Were you stopped? Uh, let me ask, rephrase it. Were you stopped by somebody not to come to Pakistan? Yes. In yes. all honesty, I was told many times, don't go to Pakistan. Don't go to Pakistan. It's, it's a very difficult situation. The security is a very difficult situation. I was even, I even said, it's done, I'm going. And people said, it's not done. You're not actually on an airplane yet. Um, you know, you can still turn back. But in my heart, I knew that I was going to encounter something different. And I think I knew that because of our partners here in Pakistan, because we've been working with them for over a year um, on this distribution and on this donation, the, uh, the Mevesh and Jahangir Foundation. Um, Ali and Sarah Siddiqui have been absolutely wonderful. Their organization, their the way they've planned everything, the way they've thought through everything. And, and my dear friend Ali Munir, who is at the end of the day the reason why I'm here today. Ali Munir. Okay, so since you have brought up a name also, so you have worked in Chile, you have worked in Haiti, you have worked in the Dominican Republic also. So was the experience same or it was different as compared to those countries? It's been, it's been different. It's different in every country we go to. But I have to say that it's different in Pakistan in a positive way. And it's actually um, different in a very enlightening and very uplifting way. Um, it's been unbelievably generous in, 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 in the sense of the people that we've been working with, but also in the people that we've donated these wheelchairs to. Um, it's been very systematized, very organized. I am amazed by how much dedication, how much work and how much effort has gone into our visit and the actual container of 300 wheelchairs that we brought into this country. It, it's really just blown me away. And do you think that these 300 chairs will be all or after seeing Pakistan where there's a requirement, uh, there will be something, something coming after it also? No, this is, this is just the beginning of a long-standing partnership and friendship, not only with the foundation that we're working with here and STEP and, and the organization STEP that we're working with here as well, but this is, this is the beginning of something that will, that will last a very long time and we hope to bring thousands more wheelchairs. So we're bringing 300 now, but we, we promise that we will be back here again. Walkabout Foundation will be back here, my family will be back here, and we will be back here with thousands more wheelchairs. Now we are talking to all those Pakistanis and foreigners or people like you who are willing to do something in Pakistan. Yes. But what we can do as Pakistanis here to convince all of you that yes, there are talented, willing, and uh, people who can help you on it what is the word of advice to all of them and to Pakistanis also? I think some of the things you can do is um, help to spread the word as you travel as Pakistanis around the world. Mm -hmm. help, help to make those contacts with individuals around the world. Um, showcase best practices and examples such as ours as an American organization that's in Pakistan today and how, how fluid it's been and how, and how well and, and, and how successful it's been thus far. Um, I think you can help to, um, yes, uh, you know, continue to build those relationships across the world and, and, and to show, you know, that there are many great examples that have succeeded in Pakistan. And I think Walkabout Foundation and our trip here is, is one of those such examples. Okay. You were very concerned about the people whom you have denoted uh, all these uh, wheelchair and uh, you have been talking to them also any of the experiences amongst all of them which touched your heart? 
Uh, gosh, where do I start? There were a lot today, um, and there have been a lot. I would say that um, I met a young man who um, he contracted polio when he was very young, and um, he's been riding around in a chair that A is not fitted to his body, and he's been riding around in this chair for years. And you can see already the physical consequences of being in a chair that's not fitted to his body, which is such that he's developed contractures and curvatures of the spine and, a, and, of, and, and, and almost scoliosis of the spine. Um, but what's even more interesting is he said to me, thank you so much for bringing these chairs uh, because you're really changing my life. Because now I can be in a chair that I can actually push myself. Whereas the chair I'm in now, the armrests are so high that I can't even get my arm across to be able to reach the wheel and the handles. So I, he really touched me. And he was a, he's a 23-year-old young boy. And, um, and it, it's something that I, I think I will never forget for the rest of my life. OK. Uh, your brother uh, heads your team in United States. You also travel in UK and USA. So do you want to extend it to other countries also? Absolutely. So our work is very much global, but our work is also very much about where the need is greatest. We go where the need is greatest, um, which is also why we're in Pakistan. Um, but where we go, we find that you know we're a drop in the ocean, and there's so much more that we could do in that country, and there's so much more help and, and relief and humanitarian efforts that we need to provide. Um, so a country like Pakistan, actually, not only do I realize that there's so many more wheelchairs that are needed here, but also there's so much opportunity here. People have a sense of entrepreneurship. People have a sense of, of a go-getting sense, a sense of let's go and do something and let's, let's make something out of this. And I've, I've learned and I've spoken to people over the last two days that they actually, you know, they're, they're thinking, Pakistanis are thinking about how can we manufacture these wheelchairs here? How can we set up a factory here? Or how can we set up an assembly shop here so that you buy and other NGOs buy the, or the, the wheelchairs from us and then distribute them around the country to other Pakistanis? Um, so actually, you never know. Maybe we'll be setting up a, a walkabout office in Pakistan. <laughs> Very nice. Uh when you donate money, you have the issues of the transparency. How do you ensure that all the transparency angles are taken care? So, you know, we don't actually donate money, we donate a product. So we receive the money, we buy the consignment, and we, we ship the, the container of wheelchairs to a given country. In this case, our partners, um, Mevesh and Jahangir, Jahangir Foundation, have been phenomenal. Um, they've been completely transparent with us from the get-go. They have um, provided us with a list of 300 recipients that will be receiving the wheelchairs from their names to their ages to their provinces to their ailments to their body measurements. Um, they have been incredibly transparent in terms of where they're receiving the consignment and the container, where they're taking it to, where they're housing it, where they're, where they're then trucking the chairs around the country. So I think it's very important to identify the right local partner to um, align yourself with and make sure that once you've identified that partner that you work closely with over the years. Um, so I'm very confident that with the, the foundation that we're working with here, with Ali and, and, and um, Saira Sadiqi and, and with Ali Munir, that we will keep track of the recipients of these wheelchairs. This is just the beginning. We will, we will, we will find out you know, how these chairs actually benefited their lives and changed their lives to allow them to be integrated members of, of the society and the Pakistani community. This product was made outside Pakistan. Do you think that after this they can be maintained in Pakistan? Absolutely. So, so you know, they're called Rough Rider wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. They are called Rough Riders because they're specifically designed and manufactured for the rugged and rough terrain of the developing world. So Pakistan has perfect terrain for these kind of chairs. They're meant to be used in terrain like Pakistan. They're made of all bicycle parts and bicycle tubing so that every nut, bolt, washer, screw, um, everything you find on that chair can be replaced and repaired at any bicycle shop or any motorcycle shop in this country. So they can absolutely be maintained here. And not only can they, can they be maintained, but as I mentioned, they can actually be either assembled or actually manufactured here as well. OK. Since you said, Carolina, that there will be a phase two also coming, uh, this, uh, lastly, if you could tell me that how will you unfold the phase two of your this present project? So we will begin to unfold phase two um, after we see the progress and developments of phase one. We've brought 300 wheelchairs into the country. We will continue to monitor the recipients of those chairs and see how these chairs have positively affected their lives. 
and then we will continue to keep track and, and identify more and more recipients that need these chairs, again through STEP um, and through the Mahavesh and Jahangir Foundation, um, but also through, you know, uh, um, realizing that there are other partners, other, other, in, other organizations um, focusing on physical disabilities in this country that will approach our current partners and, and provide us with more recipients that need these chairs. And then we will work together with Pakistani donors, Pakistani corporates, um, and Pakistani nationals that are living abroad, um, and work together to fundraise more to be able to uh, help and aid more Pakistanis in, 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 in your country. Kalina, thank you very much for coming to the PTV News for uh, this noble cause. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this was Carolina Benster, who has come to Pakistan for the first time. She has seen the transparency. These are those people who come across an accident, but that accident changes their life. They are willing not to work only on individuals, but they reach out to anybody around the world. These are the global citizens who think that the humanity has to be saved in any way. With these words, Numan Khan says, Khuda Hafiz from this episode of Guest in Town. Thank you.